This SGPN Fantasy Football Preview Edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Bet a hundred dollars of WinBet and get a hundred dollar free bet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. We're also brought to you by SGPN Fantasy. Dominate your draft with the free SGPN Draft Kit. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash draft kit. And the free roll football contest is back and better than ever. Five thousand dollars up for grabs in our NFL contest and fifteen hundred bucks in our brand new college football contest. Sign up exclusively in our Discord, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. Hey, this is Derek Stevens. I'm the owner of Circa Las Vegas. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Oh well, it's uh, we're here for the final fantasy, Sean. The final time to talk. Probably not the final time we'll be yeah. talking fantasy. We might be able to squeeze in one more best ball before Tur- the season kicks. Turns up. out I haven't done all 150 <laughs> best ball drafts, so we'll, we'll do one more. At least. I, it is fun looking over and seeing Ryan wearing a shirt uh, that has uh, a photo of Ryan. 24 I, hours I of live best chat. ball this drafts. Is, I mean, this yeah, is, show it off. Show it off for the uh, good folks. Yeah, look at that sweet thing. Just sitting on his couch, <laughs> thinking about his next move. Who do I look like more, Costner? Or, I mean, Big Ben. Big Ben, come on, right? I mean, you're never gonna get away from the Big Ben. Hey, get it. What get about it. Mark Andrews? <laughs> Active players only. Uh, Marcus Saul is a sneaky. Oh. Uh, is, is actually the sneaky right. Spanish answer. men I've heard uh, know how to close deals. <laughs> uh, and hey, get get a uh, draft day T-shirt. Get. Um, I mean, we have a ton. I'm rocking the sweet SGP camo hat. All available in the store. Store.sportsgamblingpodcast.com. Going to be dropping some discount codes in the Discord as well, and hop in the Discord one to hang out and chat with everyone, all the SGPN contributors, listeners. Two to enter our free roll football contest: five thousand dollars up for grabs in the two nights at the win, fifteen hundred dollars for a college contest, huge overlay, five hundred dollars in our uh, survivor contest, and a two hundred fifty dollars gift. So many prizes, so huge. much going on. Massive overlay. football is here. <laughs> Listen <laughs> to that noise. Listen to that. I, I'm just so jacked. Football he is fumble. here. He could fumble, Ryan, but I'm not going to fumble this read because it's for WinBet, the presenting sponsor of the Sports Gambling Podcast. All you got to do: sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash w y n n b e t. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. That's right. Got a bunch of fun props already up. Player props, QB totals, win totals for college football. I mean, we got college football tonight. We got college football tomorrow. College football Saturday, Sunday, Monday. We got it all. And of course, next week, the National Football League is back. No more preseason. We're talking about regular season, super serious games. It's all on the line, and you can bet it all over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. And of course, bet a hundred dollars, get a hundred dollar free bet. Yes, sir. Easy peasy. Offer subject to change, terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in the state where play through winbet is available. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1 800 522 4700. We're also brought to you by Odds Trader. Odds Trader, great place to compare odds from all the major books, get the different sign up codes and promos, get the best deal, and then a ton of game stats, injury reports, projected game day weather. They got it all handicapping. And a bet tracker. Really, it is your one stop shop when it comes to sports gambling. Just go to oddstrader.com slash blue wire. That's O D D S trader.com slash blue wire. Odds trader, the number one site for all your game day bets. Joining us, he is your uh, number one insider when it comes to injuries. Uh, we know him as at SGPN football doc. Of course, Sebastian Fearon. Sebastian, thanks for coming back on the show, man. Appreciate it. 
Yeah, absolutely. Gentlemen, thank you for having me on. You know, it must be football season. I just looked at the schedule five straight days of football. Mm, yeah. And I'm on with you fine gentlemen. Football must be back. Let's go. <laughs> uh, you, we were talking before the show backyard brawl about to kick off here. Uh, oh, you're a pick, a pick. Uh, I mean, also <laughs> an army man. We got army on deck yeah. this week, and with a big one down, uh, down there, down south on the weird, nasty field of coastal. Uh, it's always, it's always good to talk to a medical professional <laughs> while they're also drinking a beer. Then I know I can, I can trust Sebastian's analysis. He's drinking <laughs> some beers while, while dealing well, out I, so medical analysis. He's here. a, he, <laughs> a, as a doctor, he knows the right oh, way to get on, his body you know, ready exactly. for the backyard brawl. Get his mind right. His, his mentals, right? <laughs> you gotta be a little loose in case something crazy goes down. <laughs> Listen, I was, I was in Pittsburgh for uh, three years getting my doctor there. And I learned one thing uh, besides the lures, it's beer. That's that's a beer city right there. They were at the most bars per capita on the street wow. I lived on. All right. So Pitt's playing tonight. You know, the fiance already told me I have a drink home when she's ready. Listen, we're ready to roll here in this household. Let's go. All right. So uh we're gonna talk. I mean, we're just going to hit on some big name guys, kind of whether to draft them, whether whether not to draft them, how it impacts fantasy, and and any sort of advice you have when it comes to some of these injuries we're, as we go into the season. We would start. We're going to start with the most severe first, right? So we, I mean, we have to ask, like Zeke, the eating disability. <laughs> we don't mean the to laugh disorder. at it, but it's uh, he needs treatment. No, no, it's a disability for Zeke. Uh, <laughs> No, I'm just yeah. We're not drafting Zeke. Sorry. No, not not an issue. He wasn't there. on the list. I don't mean to throw a curve. All right, here we go. First one up, J.K. Dobbins. Now Kramer's oh, been oh, oh. super high on J.K. Yeah. Dobbins, so Fuck we need you, your Sean. we need your honest opinion on this. Sorry, doctor. Will he be ready? <laughs> it seems like well, he's not going to be ready week one. When will he be ready? And how uh, how, how efficient will he be once he's ready? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I knew I was gonna catch some flack over there in the Kramer gang uh, with this take. So you know, I did I did a little extra research on Dobbins here. Uh, so this quote was from today, uh, coach head coach John Harbaugh. His quickness is kind of back. Mm. That was today. Uh. So I I saw it on a Ravens fan page. They were promoting it like that's something that's good. <laughs> that's not good? Are you kidding me? The amount of hype this man is getting. He's talking about people talking about RB one. This is be RB one. And you're telling me we're a week and a half out and he's kind of back. What is that? That is terrible. I mean, here, so, so getting into the analytics of it, let's see. Uh, so he hasn't done to this point, um, no 11 on 11 and reps, no live game action. Um, he's been back at practice, but he's obviously not taking hits, you know, and the more I think about this, a stud guy, you know, look good early on he had an ACL injury. I just keeps hitting me. It's the writings on the wall. I just keep thinking of Saquon last year. Mm. You know, I, I made the mistake of thinking that, you know, I didn't think he'd be anything crazy like this hype, but I thought he might be pretty decent, but it's just, I mean, you know, the, I think it's got Saquon written all over on the wall as far as regression. There. Um, you know, I look at his ADP is going around the fifth round that if you're getting him around there, I, I'm not going to hate you as much, but with all these people talking about him putting up RB one numbers and things like that, I, I don't, I don't think that's so he's happening. On, just the research. Go ahead. Yeah. Again, it's just refreshing to hear a doctor talk ADP. I might. Um, yeah, I might not. I, I mean, let's just assume I don't have greater than twenty five percent shares of of J.K. Dobbins. Uh, well, let me let me just say this real quick because I got a couple some guys we're going to be talking about. Uh, we'll have the ACL tear. So with the ACL tears, you know, um, when we talk about running backs and wide receivers, those are the two positions that have the hardest time getting back to it. So, you know, and not Dobbins obviously dealing with that ACL and he also had uh, ligament or damage to his LCO, another ligament in the knee. So, you know, the research, the writing on the wall, it's just not looking good. I don't think he's going to have a terrible year, but just with the way people are projecting him, I am not on that train. Sorry, Mm. Kramer. I don't like the writing on the wall, Sean. I appreciate his. It. I appreciate his candor and his. Uh, oh, of course you do. Bedside uh, man. Of course as well. you do. You spell. Uh, <laughs> you spell team with three eyes. Uh, <laughs> next up, you mentioned you mentioned ACL tear. You mentioned James Robinson. He's a guy I keep kind of coming back to. I know ETN is also coming back from an injury, missing an entire uh, season with injury. If you had to, uh, doctor, I know this is tough. If you had to choose between Robinson or Robinson or ETN, based on their draft position as well, uh, uh, what would you do? And, and just walk us through both guys there. 
Yeah, yeah. So Robinson, we're talking about Achilles tear there. Um, so that's another one that's really hard to come back to with ETN. We're talking about a Liz Frank injury. Uh, both, uh, you know, ETN, he got hurt a little bit sooner than Robinson did. So he's got, he's got the recovery aspect on his side. But to me, like you just mentioned, I mean, ETN is going several rounds higher than Robinson is at this point. So with that factored in and the fact that he doesn't, he's never played a snap in the NFL. I yeah. don't think people realize this just because he's got his buddy with the, you know, uh, Goldilocks back there and Trevor Lawrence. Doesn't oh, that's mean a that great name. I got to steal that. Bring back, bring back the Clemson days. So I think people are overhyping that. I, I agree. He's definitely got more, um, you know, out of the backfield ability, but right now from what I'm reading, uh, Robinson is plotted to be RB one. I don't really, I really wouldn't pull the trigger on either of those guys. Robinson's easier because he's going later. So you yeah. risk less you know, less draft capital there, but yeah, I mean, I'm not high, super high on either of those guys to come back from an Achilles and a Liz Frank injury. I mean, those are, those are tough, especially for a running back. So, you know, I'm definitely off ETN. You could, you could talk me in to Robinson Robinson because of how late he is, but yeah, I mean, or, Achilles is always tough or Snoop Connor. Snoop. I mean, that's a deep listen, sleeper. The, the Robinson, the only reason is also because, you know, the research has shown that uh, guys that are proven, right? So guys that have done it for a couple of years, they typically come back better. Guys that really, you know, again, ETN, a rookie, kind of missed his rookie year. You're really kind of throwing things at the wall in that aspect. So, Ooh. yeah, I mean, hey, if you want to take the, what, Snoop Connor, you can grab him at the end of the draft. I don't think anyone's taking uh, him. So, what? 4% ownership in Best Ball Mania 3, Snoop Connor. Thank you That's very much. That's kind of fun. Uh, Travis Etienne is definitely a guy going very in the in the FFPC main event. Etienne to me is drafted way too high. Went uh, end of the second round. He's like in sharper, low, higher dollar formats. He, guys are shooting their shot on him, and they're taking him second, third round. It's crazy. I, I'm just, I'm just. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I am with the doc, I, the good doctor. I would, I would steer clear of the whole situation and take Snoop Connor at the end. Yeah, no, I mean, especially in best ball um, formats. It's all about bullets. Now he hasn't even looked good in preseason, right? I haven't. No, even seen I know that's the other thing. Him. Like, like that's, it's you know, if we were talking about my guy. Damian Pierce, uh, oh, yeah. you know, Let's flashing go. on everyone's feed, which I know that's that's a random, but I just gotta say, any all right. So I know I'm wearing my pig gear. That's where I got my grad degree. I went to I'm a Gator heart heart. That's where I got my undergrad. Lived four years in the swamp. Anyone who's a Gators fan knows that Damian Pierce. This is not a surprise, gentlemen. Listen, this is not a hot take, but this is something <laughs> I want to bring to the forefront. Listen, yes, Dan Mullen was fired because he did not utilize Damian Pierce. <laughs> there you wow. go. We were begging him 20 carries to that man. We would have had Alabama in that SEC championship. Listen, <laughs> I'm getting off topic, but that's just, oh man, that, that hurts my heart. I know it hurts other Gators fans, but good for Damian Pierce. Repping the Gators, there. and we we probably shouldn't bring up that Sean picked the, picked against your Gators this weekend. So. I did, sorry, but uh, hey, even, uh, I even, think I'm hearing a ninety percent of humidity. Oh, uh, oh. Yeah, I, don't, I know y'all talking about seven o'clock. You think the sun goes down at seven <laughs> in Gainesville? What are you doing? Uh, uh, I know, maybe I'm uh, hey, I, I, I don't feel hey. great about it. I hope the Utes are ready. That's all I'm saying. It's gonna be a good I, game. Utes are good. You Utes do start what? Sean, start the season. I now. love this segment. I love this segment right now. Yeah, just hammering you on your college picks. Oh, my college picks are fire. Me and the good doctor are lockstep on our picks. We love Army. <laughs> Shout I was out also to the on troops. Army. We love Florida. Shout out to the swamp. Not on Florida. And we love Pitt. Shout out to Let's the Panthers. He's even, the doctor's even worried about the seven and a half ride. The good doctor. <laughs> all Listen, right, now, all you gotta do this. This all you gotta do. Take the money line, parlay it with the under. Just yeah. watch. Does that Daniel's sound like a confident man, on. Ryan? Yes. Uh, if he was confident, he'd be talking about alt uh, alt oh, points of minus thirteen and a half. Ah, oh, yeah, come on, next one, next one. <laughs> Sebastian, um, we didn't have it on the list, but this one did pop oh. up somewhat recently. Najee mm -hmm. Harris is dealing with a a Liz Frank bruise. Now it's not a any any played in the, the third preseason game. Sounds a little soft. What? Yeah. What? It, what is that? Is it something to be worried about? Are we moving um, Najee Harris down our boards? What's your take on a? I think it was a Liz Frank bruise or sprain, but obviously you're the doctor. Yeah, they're they're calling it a sprain. So when we talk about a Liz Frank injury, typically, you know, th there's obviously different grades and severities of all these injuries. So Liz Frank, we're talking about your midfoot. You can talk about either broken bones in that area or torn ligaments or both. So when things are torn or broken, that's when it becomes the season ending thing that we hear about, you know, just like any ligament, you can sprain a sprain is essentially a tearing it a micro tear. So anytime you get a kind of strain, so we're kind of getting into the, the weeds of it, but essentially, you know, with him 
playing as long as he did in the third preseason game. I had that on the TV. I don't know if y'all saw. I mean, he played the whole half. Yeah. So if if there were really some injury concerns there from Tomlin, I, I'm going to say that he wouldn't have done that. So I I think we're we're good to roll there. You never want to hear about that going in. Uh, but the fact that he played that much in the third preseason game, and I think, you know, I was just checking, I did a draft last night and, you know, he's, he's kind of fallen from that news. So I think this is a good time to let that news, you know, you know, let that get out and let him fall a little bit. And now you can snag him for a little bit cheaper of a price. And, and if you didn't uh, Andrew Robs point out, pointing out in the chat that you can uh, fade him by taking Jalen Warren. Mm, that's in interesting. Draft. I mean, yeah, <laughs> best it, ball I, if you're looking yeah. for a best ball dart, uh, maybe go Jalen Warren. Speaking of other Pennsylvania running backs, Miles Sanders, he just returned to practice. I've been kind of nervous about Sanders. He had hamstring issues last year. Now the hamstring very pop, nervous. Popped up again. Um, what's your take? Uh, do you have any insight on Miles Sanders? He's a guy again, like he he keeps sliding down the draft board. I think probably where he's being taken right now, especially with this news, uh, could be a value. But where where are you at with Miles Sanders? Yeah, I figured this one had to come from gangrene over there. You know, I, I try my best to be impartial, but anytime that uh, this, this mm. Billy Green comes on my screen, it's kind of. <laughs> but I, I fought through it and looked into it. Yeah, so like you mentioned, today he actually returned to practice today. So good news for the Eagles fans over there. Um, but he missed uh, two and a half weeks of practice, so with a hamstring injury. Now, you know the hamstring injuries because we're going to talk about some guys that are dealing with this. So your hamstring, obviously, the muscle in the back of your leg. This is kind of the powerhouse of your leg. It allows you to sprint, to jump. You know, it, it really does a lot for these athletes. And it's a tough injury because it re-injures. It has a high re-injury rate. And that's because when you're doing rehab, it's hard to gauge where that muscle's at. And, you, you know, these guys need to turn it on. And it's kind of usually when you go that acceleration burst. And then, like, that's where you get that tweak. Like, oof, it wasn't ready. And sometimes you don't know it wasn't ready until it's there. And a re-injury is always worse. So, you know, I was a little bit more down on him before I, I read today that he came back to practice. So that's definitely good news. Um, they're expecting him to be back week one. For me, you know, it depends when your draft is. I'd like to see him string together several practices in a row. Cause like we'll talk about, some guys will come back and then they'll be out another three, three weeks because they, <laughs> they re injured it. Yeah. So uh, where he's going now though, I mean, I got him what RB29. Um, and he's I mean, Philly, who else? They got Gainwell and our I don't, I think, yeah, you got good value there. Cause he's still RB one there. I mean, I know Jalen hurts is really RB one, but I think you have good value there. He, if, if he continues to practice, he's going very late um, again in, in some of the high stakes stuff Yeah, was having the conversation in the eighth, ninth round range, where it was like, at some point you probably got to take, I him, mean, their offensive line, the fact that he had zero touchdowns last year, you would think there's some regression they will, in there. They will probably be a top 10 carries team. Understanding that hurts is some of that, but I mean, how, what were they last year? They were top three in carries, weren't they? Yeah. And I do think they passed the ball more, but um, still it, it oh, feels right. like he's they, got some, they got Got AJ Brown. AJ Super Brown team. confirmed. Assemble. Super team assemble. <laughs> All right, who's who's your receivers? We can we can say. Well, well I mean, uh, what what about uh, Jalen Waddle? What about Jalen Waddle? He's he's been dealing with it. Looks like a nagging hamstring. Um, this one to me, I've seen it, like video of him limping around. I I was higher on him coming into the season, but this is kind of scaring me off. Should I be scared off, or or should I still be in on Waddle? All right, so I got an, I got another great quote for y'all. So this is from uh, head coach Mike Daniel, which I mean, when I look at him sometimes, and when I've seen some of these quotes, it kind of <laughs> reminds me of that uh, bench warmer scene where it's like I am twelve type thing. I'm like, where are the credentials for this guy? But anyway, <laughs> he says, "Quote, I want to get this right." So quote, very, very, very confident he plays week one. So that's three three varies for those counting at home. Um, but that's, that's what he said. His is a little bit harder to read because they're not, they're not giving me a lot of information. They're not giving yeah. anyone. They're basically calling it a lower body, soft tissue injury. So yeah, that could be hamstring. That could be a groin injury. It could be a calf strain. You really don't want your guy to have any of that, but it kind of matters depending on which one it is. Um, so he's not been practicing for about two weeks. The head coach is saying it's precautionary. If they had games to play, he would be playing. Uh, I mean, that's the thing though. Like, I, I don't know how much it changes um, kind of his position. Cause he's, I got him at wide receiver 20th uh, with the ADP and I'm coming around the fourth, fifth round. I still think, you know, like we talked about with Tua, like he's going to throw on the ball so many times. PPR I, machine. I wouldn't be scared off at, at this point. I'm not scared off unless it, it continues on. And with uh, you know, I'm going to, I guess I'm going to trust 
head coach Mike Daniel on his right, very, I, don't, very right? I don't know, but he also said Tua has the most catchable ball in the NFL. I say, so I don't know. We laid out the case as to why this man is a sociopath <laughs> who is just trying to put off the impression that he's a human. So I, who he's doing know, an impression of a human. I would not. I would not take anything he said. I, he could. I mean, I would great assume point. he's lying. That's a great point. Um, now, what about uh, this one, Michael Thomas? Has missed an insane amount of time, but again, he's a guy you know playing in the dome with Jameis Winston. They have a lobby across from him. They have Jarvis Landry. Maybe he creeps some opportunities with Michael Thomas. I mean, you could tell me Michael Thomas plays 17 games and has an awesome season, or he barely sees the field. I don't, I don't really know what to make of him. Any insight on Michael Thomas? Yeah, and and absolutely. I mean, it's yeah, I would say the Saints are one of the most polarizing teams, at least for me, week to week. Like sometimes I look at their roster and I'm like, wow, this offense, you know. It can be great. We're talking about they can give uh, Tampa a run for their money. But then the other weeks, I'm like, well, you got your QB one come back from an ACL tear. You got Kamara who's looking at a suspension, and then now you got Thomas over here just after. So he spent what a year and a half, almost two years with the ankle injury. Yeah. He was all the way to the point where he was finally able to practice, and then he comes up with the hamstring injury. So I can't trust this guy at all. Uh, I, I wouldn't deal with the headache personally. I mean, mm. they're saying, I just read a report today. It's positive news on his hamstring. I don't know how it can be positive if he hasn't practiced yet. I don't, I don't get that angle. So well, sometimes and, and, these are- and that injury could be a, you're still, your ankle is still not a hundred percent. And you're like, uh, you're compensating. Do you, you know, th- it's called, I, you haven't played football in a long time. Yeah. That's, that's the other thing, the right? That you're just abs- yeah. body's not Absolutely. in football shape. Uh, speak- yes, both of what you guys just said. Yeah, we're talking about. I mean, the the biggest reason, biggest risk factor for an injury is a previous injury, especially to that body part, right? So we're talking about compensatory compensatory patterns. He didn't come back from the ankle fully. He hasn't played football in a lot. I mean, you guys both hit it the head nail on the head. I mean, you can't trust this guy to stay healthy, let alone produce all seventeen games. The real question yeah. we want to know in our high high stakes <laughs> in our high stakes crypto league, we have the number two pick. I have it with good knowledge that the number one pick is going uh, is going to take Jonathan Taylor. Have it on solid authority. Are Ryan uh, should Ryan and I take Christian McCaffrey here? Full point PPR, doctor. How say you? He's only played ten games. I I kind of think Christian McCaffrey. This is actually the year he doesn't get hurt. This, I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, my my dad actually asked me this exact same <laughs> question yesterday, last night. I'm trying to. So I've been trying to rack my brain on it the past like 24 hours because you know I, you want to do the the old man right there, uh, but gosh, you, you got to. I mean, uh, okay, who who else are we considering now? Like CMC and I don't know who else you can talk me into. I I don't really love Eckler that high. Justin, I mean, unless you want to go Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson would be, and I don't know how Ryan feels. He would be the only other guy I would consider it too. You assuming don't have to talk Jonathan me Taylor is into gone. not taking running backs. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I mean, I just uh, it, that's hard. That's 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 a really hard one. Honestly, gun to my head, I think I would just take Christian McCaffrey. You don't want to overthink it and get too cute. Um, I, I feel really like Baker Mayfield trust. is going to throw him a million passes. Well, we'll, yeah, we'll just yeah. we'll, we'll I mean, draft. And I, we'll just yeah, draft I, Deontay I, Foreman later. We'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, we'll get it. Yeah, we'll, just make sure you get the handcuff. There you go. Now, now his uh, apparently he's doing. I, I forget who it was that uh, another like former running back talked to him and said, you got to st- stop focusing on the pretty muscles and start focusing on the muscles, like the stretchy muscles. And, and he supposedly he's increased his stretching a ton. Oh, he, so he's better at the stretchy muscles. Yeah. So we'll see. I, 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 again, I'm telling you, Chris McCaffrey, no major injuries this year. What about my other, uh, my good buddy, Bobby Tunyon, uh, of course, got a rough injury last year. But he's back. I I think he has massive fantasy value because of just he he's a he's a he's one of the few targets that has a uh, a ton of experience with Aaron Rodgers. I'd have to go back and check, but he might have the most receiving touchdowns from Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers clearly like friendly with the guy. See when it's your show, you can talk about whoever you want to. Yes, <laughs> I'm just, you love Bobby Tanya. Yeah, I'm just making and I think he's I think he's very interesting in fantasy. Uh, Sebastian, what do you, what do you got on Bobby Tanya? Yeah, no, actually I'm, I'm right there with you. I I am pretty damn high. I'm on sure. I mean, there's not many guys who are coming back from an ACL tear that I'm going to be high on just by the nature of it. But like exactly you talked about, I mean, what he had 11 touchdowns with Rogers in that 2020 season when he popped off. I mean, 
The biggest thing for me is that you can get them so cheap. I got them going, you know what, his ADP is like 169. That's pretty nice there. Um, and <laughs> nice. so he's like, he, you just, you're not risking a lot. Right. And we're talking about a guy that a team that just had Devonta Adams leave. So who else is the big body target in the red yeah. zone? Like at the amount of times that Rogers just threw that little dunk to Adams, I mean, just hit Tunyon over, over the middle. <laughs> I think he's a great, good, low risk option who can be your tight end. Number one, he's going to start slower. Like all guys coming back from major injury. I expect him, but week four or five, he should be ready to roll. I mean, uh, out of the uh, Packers camp, he took his first reps with the starters 11 on 11 this week. I mean, something J.K. Dobbins hasn't done yet. So, I mean, I think he's he's well on his way to having a, a pretty good year, especially at that ADP. I have uh, 8% Bobby Tanya. All right. Yeah, that's not bad uh, share wise. What about you, Ryan? Any uh, any other guys you're, you're Drake curious about? What, well, like, I mean, any, any future <coughs> concern from Drake London, little boo boo in the preseason? Yeah. Um, let's see. I just, I know, I know I'm line. going off script here, but I'm looking at my ownership and he's really <laughs> high. Yeah, no, no, you're all good. I actually just, uh, wrote an article about him yesterday. So let me refresh my memory. Imagine, but basically, um, imagine you had, um, he was your most owned <laughs> receiver in best ball. You know what? So that's, that's big yikes for you. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry over there, but I, I, when I was re- reading this and writing this up, like, the, the scary part is they haven't really told you what's going on. And I know some teams are closer to the best than that than other. So he hasn't seen any practice since, you know, he got hurt in his first preseason game. Like I think it was like his first catch. He got hit in the knee. Yeah. Something he looks like so that. good too, getting hurt. God damn. Yeah. I mean, what, what, what's going on here is though, look at what he walks into. I mean, he walks into, I took a look at, if you want a good laugh, like if you're having a bad day, just go over and type in Falcons depth chart and go down <laughs> to the wide receivers. Don't let Kyle Pitts in there and don't, don't look at Calvin Ridley suspended. Just look at those wide receivers. Yeah. This man is arguably by far wide receiver one on this roster. So assuming this knee injury, like everyone's saying, you know, everyone the, they're saying he's going to be ready for week one. It's not a big thing. They feel good about where he's at. I would like to know what it is because anything, you know, that long kind of can be a little worrisome. We're talking about two weeks missing practice, but just because of his situation, what he's walking into, I, I really think he could be a league winner this uh, year if he does, if he stays healthy. Because you can get him pretty late now. Yeah, it's, no, that's the injuries uh, driving his price down, and yeah, I guess I'll still I'll continue to get more shares. It sounds like uh, Sebastian saying uh, it's worth it. Now, now, Juice Seba- worth Sebastian, before we let you go, uh, got to yep. got to know: Is there anyone else we have we haven't hit on that you're that you're totally out on? You're not drafting. You think is a mistake to draft with ADP factored in. Besides any cowboy, yeah. Besides the Cowboys, Ooh. but any 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 <laughs> any maybe rookies that you're you already have some red flags on, or some guys coming back that people are just penciling in, and and you're a little uh, you're a little you're off them because of injuries. Yeah. Um, all right. So if I can, I'm going to talk about two guys real quick. Uh, one of them will be actually negative. One of them I want to talk about in a positive light to just to, you know, get some good karma going into this backyard brawl. Um, so Darren Waller is a guy who he's just had a weird off season. Anytime. I mean, he, he's missed about 95% of the training camp. You know, and, and I know people are going to talk about, well, he had that contract issue, blah, 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 but he's also got a hamstring injury. Mm-hmm. Now he did return to practice yesterday uh, for the first time. So that's, that's a good sign, obviously. But if we're going back in his history, he would return. He missed six practices. He returned for one practice and then he was out for two weeks. So he's already looked like he took a setback in his injury. And, you know, the more and more that hamstring gets injured, the more and more his re-injury risk goes up and up. So this is a guy who's getting drafted at like tight end number five. Um, I, I don't feel comfortable taking him there. Uh, I, if you're expecting him to be your tight end number one all year and produce, I think you go, you look elsewhere. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's my opinion on him. Hamstrings, obviously we talked about are tough to come back to. He's already re-injured it. Yeah. I mean, he came back to practice, but that doesn't mean he's going to stay. He, he kind of made me think it wasn't the exact same injury, but we remember Curtis Samuel from last year who dealt with a groin injury all training camp. And then he just, he was like expected to be a, you know, a pretty good fantasy player. I think he finished with like under 300 yards receiving. He, he had a terrible no show. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. He was, uh, he was done um, on the positive side though, real quick. So uh, someone that kind of has been gotten, been forgotten uh, Robert Woods. Mm. Now, when I wrote, um, I did some outlook 
piece earlier on in the off season. And, you know, I wasn't super high cause he, he kind of, he got injured in uh, what's that November 3rd. Um, so he wasn't gonna have the most recovery time, but everything I'm reading out of Titans camp, I mean, he's been back in a limited fashion since May and he's been an active participant. I mean, he even played in their last preseason game. He only had one catch, but still, I mean, I think this is someone who I'm not high on Traylon Burks. You got rid of Julio, AJ Brown out of that offense. I mean, you got to throw it to someone. Um, so I, I think for where he's going, you know, ninth, eighth round, I think that Robert Woods potentially, you know, come week four or five, he can be putting up some wide receiver one numbers and you can get him pretty damn late for what, what he can uh, bring to the table. There, I got 8% woods all you, you know, actually, I, I take that back. Not all stacked with Tannehill. One is stacked with Willis. Let's go, Malik Let's Willis. Go. Now we're talking. Hey, uh, Sebastian, appreciate you calling in. Make sure you follow Sebastian on Twitter at SGPN Football Doc, and he does a uh, really great weekly column, giving you tons of insight for betting, fantasy. Um, get you going for the uh, for football on the weekend. Appreciate it, uh, Sebastian at SGPN Football Doc. Absolutely, gentlemen. Y'all take care. Enjoy that football. Let's go, Gators. Let's go, Pitt. And as always, go Army, gentlemen. I'm going to parlay that on your behalf right now. <laughs> the doctor parlay. Hell I like yeah. it. All right. Take it easy, Sebastian. Appreciate it. Always fun uh, talking to Sebastian. It's just great talking to a uh, doc that also oh. is a, a D-Gen doc. Maybe we should get the uh, I, a nickname of the D Gen, D-Gen of doc. docs. The doc of D-Gen. Hey, uh, we got another guest coming on in a second before we get to that. Want to shout out promoguy.us. That's right. Again, tons of uh tons of great opportunities over at promoguy a do promoguy.us. It's a great way to increase your bankroll. Uh, you get the biggest bonuses from all the best sports books in the country. Thousand dollar risk free deposits, insane odds boosts, and most importantly, the best analytics in the business. Uh tons of free picks as well. Promoguy.us is your guide to betting smart. Once again, that's promoguy.us. Hey, we're also brought to you by Sleeper. That's right. Sleeper is one of the fastest growing fantasy platforms. Uh, NFL, college football, MLB. And again, um, you probably already play fantasy on it, but now the over under game, the player props. We just did for college football picks week one. We gave out a plus 600 uh, player prop parlay over on Sleeper. You can get that. Uh, the best way to get it, honestly, is in our group chat. So just go to sleeper.com slash SGP. You can copy our picks. And if you got some awesome picks in there, tag us. I'm at Sean T green. I'll copy your picks. We'll be good to go. You can win two X all the way up to 20 X. The amount of money you put in and you get that hundred percent deposit bonus up to $100 promo code SGP at sleeper.com slash S G P terms and conditions apply. See sleepers terms of use for details. Last but not least run your pool. And that's exactly what you do over at run your pool. You run your pool. We're running our own pool, a free NFL survivor contest, $500 in cash and a $250 gift certificate to the SGPN store to the winner. All you got to do is sign up over at play.runyourpool.com slash SGPN play.runyourpool.com slash SGPN. You're going to compete against Kramer, myself, bunch of the SGPN staff, the listeners. We're all going in. Only one person will come out victorious with the $500 cash and the gift certificate. And again, run your pool is obviously the best place to run your pool, whether it's pick them survivor fantasy one a stop shop when it comes to football pools and fully customizable. I think they even have uh, squares. So if you're going to be doing those down the line, it's way, way easier uh, doing. I mean, if you've ever had to run a pool, those, they can really be a pain in your ass. That's why you got to do is run your pool. Just go to play dot run your pool dot com slash S G P N. All right, joining us on the line to talk about some uh just some fantasy football. You know him from the SGPN fantasy football podcast, Mr. Justin Bruni. Bruni, what's happening, man? Hey, not a whole lot. Pleasure to be here, gentlemen. Yeah, thanks oh. for coming on the show. I, I like the whole get up. <laughs> yeah, he's got if you're watching if you're not watching on YouTube, you need to. He's got a virtual screen. It appears he's at the Allegiant Stadium, uh, home of the Las Vegas Raiders. He's also got a uh, sweet Nike headband on. What did what inspired the uh, Raiders virtual location for you? 
Uh, I used it the other night when I was rocking a uh, Odessa Permian jersey. Uh, today I was rocking the 49ers <laughs> uh, old TO jersey. Uh, so yeah, I was just, you know, trying to mix in some of the color background. I thought that the vibe at the Allegiant uh, stadium in the booth here, this is where the, the background is set up. I, I, I kind of like it, you know, it's uh you know, mid-century modern meets uh, the, the death star. <laughs> yes. That's exactly what it is. I know Colby hates all domes, but uh, that's open air. <laughs> When I went there for the Eagles game, I mean, oh no, uh, don't say uh, it. Aside from the Eagles getting their ass kicked, I thought it was like a a pretty fun experience. You feel you're like you're at a rock concert meets football. I I really enjoyed myself. You mean they they they're making it so you have to have a good time because TVs are good. It's great. I mean, the world's changing. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I I like uh, outdoor football as well, but roofs are nice. I mean, in we live in houses with roofs. <laughs> you know, in in Vegas. I don't see you can't hot as shit. You couldn't do an open air stadium in Vegas. And it's awesome to have a football stadium in Vegas. I still yeah. contend. And Bruni, d- tell me, correct me if I'm wrong. This is an awesome idea. I don't know why the NFL didn't think of it. Las Vegas should be a neutral field location. They should have kept Thursday night. Kept, every Thursday night game in yeah, Vegas. Every once a year you would have been fair. Once a year, you get to see your team play in Vegas, regardless of who you are yeah. as an NFL fan. You play a neutral all Thursday night games are played in Las Vegas. It would be awesome. They would clean up for sure because as bad as Thursday night games can be, you know, when you get like the Browns and the Jags yeah. on there, and it's just like a, the worst matchup you can think of. And like week week fourteen, you're really down the final stretch of the season. Yeah, that would have been a nice boost. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, Browns fans are still going to <laughs> Vegas. It doesn't matter that the team sucks and Deshaun Watson hasn't played football for a while. They're still coming out for that game. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. It's a great destination. All right, let's talk <laughs> fantasy football. Um, yeah. We thought it would be again. We've done a million drafts. You guys have uh, on the fantasy feed. Uh, we've done we've done the rankings. We've done the charts. We've done some the of best us balls. have done twenty four hours straight. We have the draft kit up again. Uh, make sure you check that out. Sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash draft kit. Oh, real Tons quick, of great information. Yeah, real quick nugget on the draft kit. So uh, I got a screenshot from the wife. It was her sharing the draft kit with a coworker. <laughs> Shout out to the fantasy team because you know makes you look pretty official when the. The wife yes. sending you a screenshot of her sharing the fantasy kit. Yeah, we got legit. Yeah, I don't um, mind that. yeah, yeah, that's a that's a compliment right there. We got legit projections, rankings. Like she didn't just say, "I have no fucking clue." <laughs> like I can't help you with your fantasy draft. She said, "Oh, let me go." I didn't give her the URL. Wow, really? Let me go find the URL and send it. <laughs> o- Boom. Okay. She's good to go. All right. So here's how we're gonna do it. Um, myself, Bruni, and Kramer. We're gonna try and put together our perfect team. And I I'm drafting in the one to four ish range. Bruni's going to go five to eight. Kramer will go nine through 12. Again, this is just like guys you want to target if you were doing a snake draft. So for instance, if I'm in the two spot, who am I going to take there? And then, you know, it would snake around. So then I'm essentially getting two picks oh. back to back. You continue. Sorry. I was What's enjoying it? your description of a snake draft. No, Ryan, I'm explaining this convoluted concept that you went with. So I feel like it's a fairly straightforward. Con- <laughs> Bruni understood what I was, what I meant. Okay, all right. Breaking well, Bru- third as, long as, here. as long as Bruni, as long as Bruni understands, let's get it going. No, we're actually going to do auction, and we're going to do dollar <laughs> amount, projected dollar amounts. All right, just kidding. Okay, um, my first pick in the one to four spot. Give me Christian McCaffrey. Again, I don't think he's going to get injured. We just worked it out with the uh, SGPN football doc. I'm in on Christian McCaffrey this year. The Baker Mayfield thing, I think he's going to catch even more passes than normal. I'm willing to risk Christian McCaffrey, no injury. You could talk me into Justin Jefferson as well. He's the only other guy I would really like, and maybe I even if I'm number one, I go I go Christian McCaffrey over mm. Jonathan Taylor. Where Ooh. are you at? Where are you at, Bruni? What's your official like one, two, three? So I have uh, Jonathan Taylor. CMC and then Eckler. It's kind of pretty vanilla, okay. right? I mean, that that's pretty consistent with the, with the public. I have seen a lot more of CMC going over Jonathan Taylor. I believe I was in a best ball draft with you guys. And in that draft, CMC went one Oh one. Um, so I've been, I've actually gotten uh, JT at the one Oh two, a few times here. He's still the, the most preferred option, really the identity of the Colts offense. And I just feel like he's going to have the safest floor week in and week out. And of course, knock on wood hasn't hit the injury bug yet. Obviously, from what we've seen from CMC in the past, 
the high volume, you know, down the stretch could be an issue, but obviously you like how the Panthers have been handling the situation, limited work and training camp, holding him on a preseason, really checking all the right boxes to make sure that he's going to be available and valuable for us in fantasy early on in the season. I'm not in the school of thought to bringing up Eckler ahead of those guys, but yeah. realistically, I like the three of them uh, right in that front running group, uh, all very safe floors for me, depending on how many drafts you have, that could also divert, you know, your shares, right? Like if you've already taken Jonathan Taylor at the one Oh one and you get another one Oh one by all means, go ahead and divert and take a CMC, but I'm still going uh, CMC at number two, not prioritizing him over JT just yet. So what do you, what are you looking to nail first round in the middle spot? Five to eight. Uh, I like Dalvin cook. I've had him yeah. fall to me a few times uh, at the fifth or sixth pick. Um, once those top three receivers go, you're starting, or I'm sorry, running backs go. You're starting to see people bring in the receivers like the Justin Jefferson's. If you get someone that's really high on Jamar chase, I've seen Jamar chase go uh one Oh four in a single quarterback league. Uh, so I get to kind of come back around on that mid tier group of the other running backs, like a Dalvin cook, who I really love. Again, someone who I feel like in the first round has a very incredibly safe floor, not just in PPR, but in half point PPR as well. Uh, I feel like he's still going to have a, a huge portion of that uh, Vikings offense, even with you know the talk of them being more vertical, passing more. I still feel, feel like he's going to be the face of the group. Yeah, I mean, I love the pick too, and it, I mean, it could could very easily be the top running back this year. Yeah, are, I guess. Are we worried at all with the the offense that maybe they're going to be throwing more and and Dalvin doesn't, doesn't that get, help him? But it, I, I, again, I think that. the 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 team could score more yeah. points and and I think we were on that rhyme when we were doing the NFC North. Like they might just end up hey, putting here, up a bunch. Sean, more. here's what's going to be happening. We're going to we're out in Vegas. We're going to be watching the Vikings Packer game. It's going to be a shootout, and we're gonna we're gonna watch. Dalvin Cook do something incredibly athletic, and we rem- just remember, be like, "Fuck, dude's fucking good." It's what? a dog. So I yeah I love taking him in the middle. Kramer, of the draft. so you're you're in the uh, you're in the back caboose. You you have told me previously you prefer the caboose. I do. You prefer uh, main event team with Dick Olson. We're drafting out of the nine spot. You prefer coming in the back door here, um, Kramer. Nine through twelve. Well, well, who's who's your dream pick here? Well, so. Th- there are worlds where I would attempt to get, take Saquon here. Okay, I mean, we're not going to do that though. So uh, I love taking Devontae Adams in this spot. He's consistently falling to the back end of the draft. Uh, you're going to be able to pair him with either a stud running back, or if you really fancy uh, some running back chicken, just going wide receiver, wide receiver. Again, I mean, I highlighted all the reasons why as he landed as my top receiver. I I think the touchdown ceiling's very high. We we I think we discussed some some him uh, leading the league in touchdown props, and I I do think it's fun to hear folks remind you that Hunter Renfro was really good in the red zone. Yeah, yeah, that that's when they didn't have Devontae yeah. Adams on the team. <laughs> right, that so changes the dynamic. I, I I'm I love the part of the reason I like being back here is you end up with a, a choice amongst people where the, it feels lower leverage because you swing back and pick again so quickly. You end up with there's definitely a bit of a, a shelf to me at the 15, 16 spot. So to be able to get two guys in that top, yeah. top, hey, I really guess like I would say eighteen. If I, I like I like being in that position better. So yeah, I guess. Swinging around, I, that's Aaron Jones all day. Yeah, he he's falling to me at the back end of the second round in some high stakes stuff. I just love the target upside. I know I, he could I, be the number one receiver. I like AJ Dillon as much as the next guy, but I think you see the way his points went up in every game that Devontae Adams w- was out last year, and so I guess I'm um um. Coincidentally, pairing the former Packers teammates together on my perfect draft because I Love don't. It. There aren't many. Yeah, there aren't too many guys. I mean, Eckler's probably one of them. McCaffrey, obviously, if he stays healthy. But Aaron, I'll put Aaron Jones in that bucket. Najee Harris, if he's healthy, guys who can legitimately Saquon Barkley see a see a hundred tar- <laughs> like a hundred catch kind of thing. Disgusting. Uh, Aaron, Aaron Jones could what. Aaron Jones is running go routes and tra- like I fuck. know he's gonna he's running go routes and I wouldn't be surprised if they have um, AJ Dillon as the running back and then mm. just split him out, <laughs> split Aaron Jones out as the slot receiver. Athlete just change his designation to athlete. Bruni, who are you looking to get in the middle of the second? Uh, I agree. By the way, with uh, with Kramer, hundred percent. Even at uh, five through eight, I would actually be looking to grab Devonte Adams and Aaron Jones. Feel like Aaron Jones is going to have one of those type of like Alvin Kamar level seasons oh, where he's easily yeah. clearing 80 catches. So absolutely love those two picks. Uh, I've got DeAndre Swift. 
I've seen him go in a, a variety levels of the second round. Doesn't really get past uh, the middle though. Uh, probably the sixth pick of the second round is as far as he's going to fall. Really just love what the Detroit Lions have built on their offense. A lot of upgrades. Obviously, everyone loves the Jamison Williams picks. Uh, kind of waiting in the wings, right? When When's he going to get his chance? But they also added up uh, DJ Shark. Really boosted up the offensive line. Feel like the the run game is still going to be the focus of their offense to protect, you know, Jared Goff and maybe you know the potential mishaps of their passing game. Uh, but I feel like it's all going to be set up with Swift. Going to have also going to catch a lot of passes, similar uh, potential volume to Aaron Jones or Alvin Kamara, somewhere in that level, maybe sixty to eighty catches. Uh, and then obviously what he can do on the ground, you know, very special, uh, really just like the opportunity should have a ton of volume. They're not really worried about uh, any of the backups like a Jamal Williams, like really eating into his workload uh, comparatively to how AJ Dillon will still eat into like Aaron Jones, at least on the ground. Right. I uh, I'm definitely, I definitely have a blind spot to Swift and I, I, I shouldn't have closed my underdog because I'm, I'm, I would be surprised if my ownership is much higher than maybe Snoop Connor level in mm. my uh, portfolio. I don't, I don't have a ton of the Andre Swift. I mean, but I, I agree with the quarterback profile. Like it makes sense. I just, for some reason, I'm not it, the, the fucking coaching staff. They all have necks thicker than their heads. <laughs> like they I love, I love do Staley again, him losing his voice, yelling at his <laughs> running backs was hilarious. That was awesome. Uh, I just, I, I have trouble taking any sort of Detroit uh, line right. high. I'm actually at 8%. Okay. Sort of. That's not bad. I need more. You, I, I think Bruni has convinced me. I should probably be scooping up a little bit. End of the second round. I'm looking to grab Mark Andrews uh. again. If you can get Mark Andrews end of the second, especially um, yeah, cause I just feel like it's him, Kelsey. And then the, the really is like a, a middle tier with like a Goddard and stuff like that. And then it really and then you're throwing, and then you're just like dart throws. So again, you, you only can play one tight end in a 12 person two, you know, 12 person league. Isn't it funny? How I mean, I guess you can play two tight ends. I but mean, you know, it's it, the ebbs and flows of fantasy. Not very long ago, tight end was not a position that you would say, oh, you well, definitely. Because now they're playing them like receivers. But, you know? but this is an interesting season where we're both with quarterback and tight end. There's this like interesting level where it's like you should probably, you might want to grab one of those guys. It's going to make everything else easier, but yeah. you got to pay up for it. Kelsey Andrews, and then I would also put Pitts there. Yeah. Round three, I, I'm going Mike Evans again. Like Alpha. He's just a, Dog. you know, they they go out of their way to get him targets. They go out of the way to get him touchdowns. I don't get any of the sauce on Godwin. I don't. I don't really get the <clears throat> Julio. I. I mean, again, Evans. Let's say well, we you were can gonna, also you can also get Julio. Uh, you can just later. get him way later. I mean, I have a couple. Uh, some of those drafts I did with you, Ryan, during draft day. <laughs> I have a couple Tom Julio. Brady, Mike Evans, mm. Julio, mm. and maybe even Godwin. Like I have a couple like Tampa Bay super stacks and I, I love Mike Evans as I a like receiver this year. A hundred percent all in on him. What do you, what about you, Bruni middle of the third? What are we looking at? I got Keenan Allen, someone okay. that I just keep grabbing and grabbing and grabbing third, fourth, fifth round, just depending on the type of format, whether it's, you know, single quarterback, super flex, whatever, just someone that I really can't get enough of, especially in redraft. Uh, everyone's really high on Justin Herbert. A lot of people's number two quarterback, some people's number one, you know, they're expecting a very special year out of that team loaded offense. Uh, Keenan is just the, the target hog. You know, I mean, I know it's, it's funny from previous hard knocks when Anthony Lillian was like, you know, feed Keenan, Keenan blocks, but he <laughs> does a lot of other good things off the ball correctly, other than just blocking um, really just the dog in that locker room leader going to be on the field all the time. Um, I've seen people take Mike Williams over him in best ball formats. And that's just not a school of thought that I subscribe to. Uh, he is still the the A one target there, going to be used all over the field. Where Mike Williams was starting to get included in more packages, where you know he wasn't just being that X guy down the sideline early on last year. They were starting to use him more uh, creatively. Keenan Allen just keeps you with that nice steady floor. Uh, where I have started off here with like running back, running back. He's a very comfortable option uh, to be your first wide receiver drafted on your fantasy team. If you have gone heavy at running back, or maybe you were like Sean and crept in a, a, a tight end early, right? He's a good alternative to that, uh, that approach. I feel like where you can really trust him to be, you know, your top receiver week in and week out. He's safe. He, the four, he's out of the past, four out of the fast, four out of the past five seasons, he has a hundred plus catches one season. It was only 97. Like and there was a period for the older folks out there when Marvin Harrison was getting older 
Mm. He would he would fall and fall and fall. And once once the first like online draft room showed up, he was this guy that was constantly getting auto drafted and and the team would do well because no one wanted to take this aging 31, 32 year old receiver. And yet here he comes out, bangs out another eleven hundred, you know, eighty five catch, twelve touchdown season because he's in a good fucking offense. The profiles are are shockingly similar. And I, I feel like it's been years now that in the third round, uh, sitting in in some sort of ballroom out in Las Vegas, I'm doing <laughs> I'm doing the FFPC, and I'm we're, I'm looking to the guy that I'm doing it with, saying Keenan Allen in the third round. Are, yeah. we, are we firing on this again? So yeah, I mean I I love I mean I I understand why you you would be intrigued by Mike Williams because the ceiling is there, but he also you know he has a knack for getting hurt <laughs> and missing games, so it's like. You, it's a balance, and I'm 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 kind of with Bruni. I think I think I would probably take, especially in a redraft league, I would take at Keenan Allen first, just because of that consistency. Kramer, what about you? End of third. Oh, this is where you take Kyle Pitts because I think even in your your home leagues, your redraft league, someone is reading something made by someone uh, either young or smart who's saying, "Hey, Kyle Pitts is is really good and there's no target competition and even if that team fucking sucks which might might actually help his chances uh, uh he's going to have an amazing season and then oh by the way this like incredible touchdown regression might be coming I, I feel uh, like he was more hyped last year which is funny cuz usually mm-hmm. the second year is when you have that breakout year but I feel like no I feel like people I mean, wouldn't shut up about Kyle Pitts last year, but now it's like uh, we already hyped him up so much. We're gonna move on to Trey Lance and no, hype I mean, him I, up. And I think I am of the school. I, I've really enjoyed, you know, of all the different types of of various builds. I've really enjoyed the builds where you you slam a, an elite tight end with an elite running back and then a whole bunch of pass catchers, and hopefully you grab onto a, a mobile quarterback. Which I tried to demonstrate here, but yeah. So Kyle Pitts represents to me, for me, it's Kelsey, it's Andrews, and it's Pitts. Mm. I don't really want to mess around with too many dudes after that, but uh, mm. a, as we'll we'll talk about a little bit later, th- there are I will make exceptions, but so yeah, Kyle Pitts again. For everything we said about Drake London with the doc, it, this is the healthy guy who is already you know a year into his career with. You know, I am quite high on Marcus Mariota. Have a tremendously high, greater than fifteen percent Marcus Mariota holding right now. So come, come at me when he's crushing it, swinging around. It's DJ Moore. Uh, mm. This, this is a no-brainer. I'm super high on DJ Moore. I think a lot mm-hmm. of people are high, but it's still you still see his ADP dipping because he's just not as sexy as some of these other guys because he plays for the Panthers. But boy, I mean, he he's been good with horrible quarterbacks. Baker is at least an average to above average quarterback. So upgrade him. Absolutely love getting him. Plan on plan on drafting a lot of. We're getting DJ Moore in the ETH league. We so I well he's he's kind of which I, McCaffrey I look, and Moore, I look at him uh, DJ Moore Brandon Cooks to me no. they're almost the same kind of guy where they're QB proof. You're gonna well, get guaranteed production. We'll talk about Cooks later, but he's even <laughs> cheaper. Middle middle of the fourth round. What are you looking at, Bruni? Uh, going David Montgomery. Um, full disclosure, I'm a Bears fan, so it is a homer pick. Uh, but I <laughs> love his down. floor in the fifth round. <laughs> Someone that I still feel is easily going to clear uh, over 225 carries. Should have some uh, value in uh, in PPR. Should be included somewhat in the passing game. You just look at you look around the room and where is the ball going to go? You know, I like Khalil Herbert as a backup running back, but I have to still feel like given the lack of wide receiver talent and just overall, you know, elite targets, he's got to get a good amount of usage here. Uh, The only thing that would be betting against him would be an injury. uh, And that's just not something that I like to consider. You know, we were talking about CMC earlier. If I'm going to pick CMC, it's not going to be like, oh, well, he won't get hurt or I'm staying away (laughs) because he won't get hurt or whatever it is. Right. Uh, So I feel like he's going to have a very safe floor, a lot of touches in that offense. If the defense is bad, which I don't think it will be, then he should be on the field a lot. If the defense is good, then he'll be rested and ready to go. And I still still think every narrative for the Bears this season uh, produces a solid David Montgomery production. I I made the case last year, thirty to one, most rushing yards. Yeah, he looked good. He got banged up, and I I do think we've faded him too much because now there's plenty of at real sauce about how well, Khalil I, Herbert I, maybe not uh, yeah in, and, and in I favor. was I was definitely riding the Khalil Herbert hype train I he passed the eye test but as the preseason has gone along and as it's kind of shook out I'm 
<laughs> not <laughs> as high. And I do think that is a good mm-hmm. sign for David Montgomery. I was worried they were looking to maybe move on from David Montgomery. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there was like, hey, he was in David Montgomery's involved in special teams a little bit. Uh, who mm. knows? Maybe they're just trying, you know, maybe that was a wake up call for David Montgomery. <laughs> Earn your spot. Uh, so I was I was slightly worried about that kind of stuff. And I and I like Khalil Herbert, like the way he runs, I like. Um, but yeah, David Montgomery, I I I think I'm not as down on, on him as I was originally. Uh end mm. of the fourth, I'm going Lamar Jackson. I mean, I, I think he's just pumping it, you know, priming himself up for like a special season, yep. put on some weight, 37 he, pounds. It's up I there. think he, cause I think he plans on running a lot. The dude is very hard oh, to tackle. Yes. I, I think uh, Bateman should be primed for a breakout year as well. Like um, we will, Kramer and I really liked him as a prospect. He was just injured. And when you're a rookie and you start out the season injured, it's going to be like Jamison Williams, where it's just kind of hard to get it going. Um, mm-hmm. But he, he, he looked good late. So I, I think there's some opportunities for him there. I like the Ravens overall as a team. So Lamar Jackson uh, all in on him. And then uh, starting the fifth round, I'll take a shot at Mike Williams. I mean, in that offense, I mean, I understand the case against him, but in the fifth round, the upside for him is just so high. I was surprised to see his ADP where it was. I, yeah. I, I'm so out of touch. Like it really in some ways doing the best changes ball. every day. Yeah. yeah. Well, it also breaks you a little bit because there's just more play for upside and things like that. So you start seeing the yeah, Yahoo and, and the ESPN ADP start to trickle in, especially the places that aren't drafting all off season. Like even sleeper has a sharper ADP, everything else. It's like, people are <laughs> like, they're rolling out of bed. It's like, oh, let me do a, let me do a draft <laughs> over on Yahoo. And it's like, shit. So I, yeah, I mean to see my some of the receivers that you're able to get a little bit later, I'm I'm very excited to fleece my my college buddies and uh, former friends. <laughs> it's a good spot to get him because if you're drafting him in the fifth round, you're most likely getting him as your third receiver yeah. or yeah second at at worst, right? So third would definitely be the most ideal situation for me. Um, if I'm going into you know whatever sixth or seventh round and I need to kind of come back around and get running back or whatever, I'd feel really good about that start. What about middle of fifth for you, Bernie? I've got Allen Robinson um, being disrespected. I just don't get it. <laughs> yeah. You have one season where you know, you're pick just number completely two. <laughs> not on the same page with your entire organization. You know, last year the bears had tagged him. You know, they were trying to move him, trying to get something back for him. He was not going to play ball. You know, like he, he, he was not on the same page with Chicago. The two previous seasons, he had over 1150 receiving yards with Mitch Trubisky with Nick Foles and chase Daniel six to seven uh, receiving touchdowns those seasons, right around hundred catches, both of those years. Now he gets Matthew Stafford who's thrown for, you know, over 4,000 yards every year in the last decade, minus maybe two years, uh, great offense playing alongside Cooper cup. It's a very good situation. Uh, I don't know why people are so low on him. He is my wide receiver 15. I think he's coming off the board as wide receiver 27. So that's someone that I'm not shy about moving up my board. And if he lands in your lap in you know round five, I think he's going to have similar, if not better, production than you know a Mike Williams. Um, any any of those receivers you might see in Kansas City, I would still hold him higher than those guys. Uh, I, I've seen Juju kind of slip into that space. So yeah, I think he's in a very good situation playing with the best quarterback of his Ooh. entire career. Uh, any bet against him is just betting against his health. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's it, it, he certainly is a guy on my list of like, oh man, maybe I should have a little more Allen Robinson. What about you, Kramer? What do you what do you do in the end of the uh, six or sorry, end of the fifth? Uh, end of the fifth. It's Brandon Cooks. We talked about him earlier. He's yeah. talk about disrespected. I'm just or I'm just a sucker because Brandon Cooks. Uh, I will draft. I've been drafting so much of him. The ownership is nearing I think twenty eight percent. It's danger levels. But I I love this Texans team. I love the opportunity he has, and you know we've we've drummed up reasons why there's like he, oh you know Nico Collins fun number two, Brevin Jordan running in the slot, you know uh, Damian Pierce he's gonna catch a ton. Brandon Cooks is clear number one, and not oh. many guys going in the fifth round are thirty and also 25, 30 especially percent in like share. in a managed league, no one's writing down oh I got to get Brandon Cooks. <laughs> Oh, this year is the breakout year for yeah. Brandon Cooks. It's not a sexy pick. It's it's, beautiful. it's it's he's almost up there like a poor man's Keenan Allen. It's beautiful. Or you know maybe slightly even below DJ Moore, maybe better than DJ Moore. But those those three guys in particular to me are just guys that no one's 
like in love to draft, but also you you know you're gonna have a good season. I mean, Brandon Cooks even get hits like concussed all the time and just still consistent uh, season long. Uh, that's I think that's the concern is he he has had a couple of those so you know, he hope, plays through them. <laughs> I mean. He mm-hmm. he's been good with every team quarterback whatever he I still want to read the book on why he gets shipped out of town after a year or two, but not the Texans they want to keep him so all right so ooh, what was that for breaking news Blake Daily double Blake Martinez has been released from the New York Giants oh we'll scratch that uh-huh. from the <laughs> we, that gave, we gave him out as most that, tackles at uh, that's fairly surprising. Yeah. I'll, I'll be honest. That's a fairly surprise. Why, like that? Why have him hang out all summer? Like, <laughs> yeah, get rid I, of him a little sooner. Uh, uh, what do you got next, Ryan? Uh, well, it's Jalen Hurts because at this point, I'm probably it's beginning of the six. I'm probably grabbing the last of the legs, and uh, as much as I hate to endorse an eagle, he's mm. being disrespected. His floor is tremendously high. Who knows? Maybe he maybe he learns how to throw it better. Like you are uh, hypothesizing. But even if he doesn't, you, you tell me they have a good offensive line. I watched the way the dude tries to get first downs with his legs. Yeah. And we've had him in fantasy before. He just 20 points, 20 points. He'll have, there'll be a dud out there where it's like motherfucker. But I, I think he, there's a strong chance he is the most consistent. I don't think he has the highest ceiling. He's still their goal line back, too. Not sure if he has the highest ceiling, but especially if you're playing in one of those, those wild and crazy uh, 25 point. Passing, uh, four point passing touchdown leagues. Jalen Hurts becomes quite nice because the, I, his floor is like eight rushing touchdowns. In yeah, my, in my mind, I love his over for the rushing prop too. What about you, Bruni? Middle of the six. What are we looking at? Uh, going with a drum I've been banging all summer. Elijah Mitchell, very on brand for me at this spot here. Uh, someone that uh, again, I don't know why the public isn't higher on. He finished as RB twenty six last year with 11 games played. He's being drafted as RB 24 in those 11 games last year. So he's essentially being drafted the same ADP finished with only 11 games played. He finished with uh, 980 some odd rushing yards. That was eighth best in the NFL with six uh, less games played 1100 all purpose yards in that same amount of time. So a hundred all purpose yards average per game. They just cut Jamichael hasty and Trey sermon. Trey sermon headed over to the Eagles actually. Uh, saw that before we got on. What no part of? I, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why people aren't higher on him. Uh, but he, his ADP has been, you know, pretty much stalled all summer long. Yeah. Maybe it moves up a little bit more so now. But I think you're getting a great deal uh, in the sixth round, even the fifth round. I would bring him up to. Um, I'm pretty high on him. Um, uh, yeah. And, and really I, I, I think Debo's going to run less. Whoa, I mean, obviously right. Trey Lance is going to run more, he, but he's going to pass less. So I think it's going to create more rushing opportunities. He's great. If you are like full blown onions and you go receiver, receiver, tight end, receiver, quarterback, mm-hmm. receiver, and you still need a I, his ceiling is insane. He's he's the starter for Kyle Shanahan. I, that means his ceiling is he's a top. You know he turns out to be second round value, if not first round, if he stays healthy. Yeah. So I am running back eleven. That's yeah. the highest of uh, anyone in the uh, SGPN group. Actually, no, Adam has him at eleven too. But most rankings are you know twenty, twenty two, twenty five, and twenty five. So you know definitely much higher on him than the public for sure. And to your point, Ryan, I mean you look at the offense that they've had there the past handful of seasons, like they've had nobody's producing at any given time. Jeff Wilson was the leading rusher a couple of seasons ago. So I love the opportunity for him in this offense. That's going to focus on the run. I still think that they are going to protect Trey Lance with a run set up first offense. So a very good situation for Mitchell. He was on pace last year for over 320 touches. That's insane. You can draft oh going in the sixth round. It's pretty yeah, nuts. You, depending on how deep your league is, you can draft you can you can snag one of the other guys at the end of the draft. Uh, it yeah, is yeah, like weird. get TDP oh, on, yeah. at like the very very end just in case. Again, someone's going to produce out of that offense, especially if they are serious about Trey Lance. It's, it's a lot of people always get so concerned about the stacking. Like they always have to have like the first and the second guy. So you know, like if you're in Minnesota, you would get Cook and Madison, and not Cook and Kenny Nwangu. I like I've I've done this before where you go and get the first and third guy. I like the option for Tyrion Davis Price later in drafts if you get Mitchell. Uh, in Dynasty, the best thing to do would probably get to grab Wilson behind Mitchell, but you don't have to just like hunker yourself to that second yeah. um, um, lock-in guy, that second stack. You can also go to the third. 
All right, for More me, bullets, Sean. More end bullets. of the sixth round. Give me Darnell oh. Mooney. Now, Justin, I don't know. Uh, it, oh, okay, he's doing the he's doing the money man's hell side, so he's in. I know some some Bears fans are pretty cynical, but Darnell Mooney again. He was. I'm looking at it. He was fifth. not Justin. He's in. He was fifth last year in target share at 26.6 percent with a rookie quarterback. Now you get rid of Allen Robinson, you get him uh, yeah. second year connection with Justin Fields, who clearly likes him as a target. His A dot is is his Ooh. average depth of target was much higher Look at you, than Sean. I had thought. No, I in my head it's like oh he does some deep balls, but I his average depth of targets like eleven something. Um, I I really like Darnell Mooney, and he's one of the Darnell Mooney, Justin Fields, Cole Komet. Those are like some things that actually bring some consistency. And you see the connection between them. I'm I I'm not crazy here, right, Justin? Uh no, absolutely. I think Darnell uh, Mooney's gonna have a similar volume to last year. He had around 140 targets. The issue was rookie quarterback, bad offense, bad coaching. You only got 80 catches out of that. So I expect the volume to be similar, efficiency to go up, and that's yeah. gonna propel him to wide receiver two range. The only downside with him is touchdowns, right? Like I don't I think we expect him to exceed eight receiving touchdowns. I feel like you're going to get like those random guys like Ebner in there, maybe some Khalil Herbert Vilas in the Jones. red zone, random tight end, you know, stuff like that. I know Jesper Hortstead's gone. <laughs> They're going to be a he fun. Was not, J- Jesper was not on my uh, notes there. Or what Bear, was his name? Bears are going to be a fun first touchdown team. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Lots of money there. Seventh round pick. We didn't oh. talk about AJ Brown. Got to talk about Devonta Smith, who has had a. There was a little groin thing early on. He overcame it immediately and has just had a dominant performance in camp and is really strong. And he's going to be facing number two uh, cornerbacks the entire season. And the more we go through the preseason, the more I realize the Eagles are going to be passing a lot more than they did previously. So I think he can get his similar target share slightly increased and increased efficiency because it's again, second year with uh, Hertz as a starter, his second year in the NFL, and the talent is there. I mean, if you watch that dude run routes, he just gets open and he is going to be a handful for second receivers. Or sorry, yeah, second cornerbacks. I mean, yeah, Gettleman really wanted him, so I don't know how good he'll be. That's probably a, that's that's the biggest like thing that. you can say negative about like him. That, Sean. What do you got? Bruni, what about you? Middle of the seventh. Uh, another disrespected ADP value, oh. Alan Lazard, mm. being drafted as wide receiver 40. He played about half of a season total last year of like, you know, snaps included. He, he was finished as wide receiver 47. He has a complete wide open door now to more volume and more touches. Uh, I think we were all high on Aaron Jones here, but there still has to be a receiver that leads that group with receptions and targets. And you have over 200 vacated targets between uh, Devonte Adams and Marquez Valdez Scantling. I feel like there's a huge window for him to, you know, have what I would consider like a Hunter Renfro level season from last year. Hunter yeah. Renfro finished right around a thousand receiving yards, right around hundred catches close to double digit touchdowns. If he didn't hit, I, I think he had like nine or 10. I'm not sure. But you know, people ask me like what I expect out of him this year. And I would say, you know, if Hunter Renfro can do what he did with Derek Carr, why can't Alan Lazard do what he's going to do this year with, uh, with Aaron Rodgers? It's a, it's a very good situation and seventh round value can't hate on it. Yeah, that is uh, uh, all great points. And, and uh, obviously we've already seen the petty Rodgers uh, come out against his, uh, against his rookie receivers. Bold prediction. Alan Lazard is the dude that everyone drafts in your draft and stands up and proclaims themselves the smartest person in the room. <laughs> Did you know Nobody. he's wide receiver room one for Aaron Rodgers? That that's going to be the official home league smart guy draft, right? But yeah, yeah, I can I, see I, that. You can see your dad being like, "Hey, no, my dad's never played <laughs> fantasy football and has no idea with Alan Lazard, who Alan Lazard is." Yeah, metaphorical. Dad. Okay, yeah, yeah, I get it. Someone's right, gonna I'll, sneak him the tip. Yeah, I love those drafts. We're just like, this guy's starting. This guy's. This guy's. This guy's hurt. I love those drafts. Like, yeah, you guys. Yeah, I didn't you know so, that. You guys know uh, Lazard's on the Packers now. <laughs> I, love, I love when you hear something like that. Uh, quick aside, Sean. I was at la, uh, two, last year uh, FFPC out in Vegas. We sat down. Uh, we're about to do a. I want to say it was a fifteen hundred, maybe a two thousand dollar best ball draft. Uh and we're about to start and the guy at this table, he's got his laptop top out and he's like, so are you guys going to be uh, updating the pics so I can see it on the screen here? And they're like, no, this is an analog draft. Like everything's we're written pen and paper. Uh, and the guy's great. like, 
Oh, okay. Gets the his pick like pick six. Had no idea who to draft. Was completely <laughs> flustered. Well, almost got into a fight. That's All why right. you got to get the uh, SGPN uh, draft kit. He should have had his uh, SGPN rankings up. It was a t- it was a no 15, paywall. Fifteen hundred. Yeah, no exactly. paywall, and it was fi- fifteen hundred dollar uh, fucking league. Get, be prepared. Jesus. Yeah, All that's right. insane. Coming to the end of the, the seventh round, I, I mixed this up a little bit. Some late swaps because I realized I was giving too much love to the Eagles. Uh, and I, I noticed that Sean cut some picks at the end of the draft. So now I got to talk about it now. Give me Juju. Uh, I am more and more buying into the idea yeah, that they're going to come out it. and Kelsey's going to be running some fun vertical shit with MVS. And we're going to see Juju just working the middle of the field like he does so well. It's going to be, it's going to be part of what aids the running game yep. for the Chiefs. And so I love, I do think he probably has a limited ceiling, but the, the weird, think about it. Patrick Mahomes loves underhand passes. Andy Reid loves underhand pa- passes, and Juju Smith-Schuster is a dog that's willing to operate dog. in the area of the field with scary linebackers. I love for him to score some random <laughs> gimmicky touchdowns. So I, I don't think his ceiling game to game is all that high, but I do like him being on a he's your flex guy, hilariously productive yeah. offense. That's once again, maybe not a high A dot guy, but he's been playing with Big Ben. I don't hear a yeah, lot of no people one, mentioning that it's maybe no a Big high ben. A dot with Ben Roethlisberger. And then swinging around again, made a little bit of a late swap here because I had to talk about my guy, former our gal from San yeah. Diego State, comically late. Come on, give me Rashad Penny here. You know Pete Carroll is going to want to run the rock, especially with those quarterbacks. And you know, you know, some Ken, uh, Ken Walker. I'd be worried, like Pete Carroll. I'm not drafting. I'd be worried with the the, the core oh. muscle issue. A hernia, a rookie with a hernia. Should injury? ask the the no doc thanks. about that. But uh, so anyway, I'm all in on Rashad doc. Penny. Fingers crossed, he can stay healthy. He is my second running back at this point. If you don't count Jalen Hurts, so I will be working the waiver wire on this team. But love that. Enjoy one. your attempted dig there, Thanks. Ryan. Well, uh, Bruni, um, what about you? Is, is the is the other guy besides Kelsey going to be Juju? Yeah, I I agree. I'm all in with Juju. I, and realistically, it's not just from like oh you know situational stuff because I feel like everybody can kind of fit those molds, right? Like Juju can get a higher A dot. MVS could be the underneath guy. Or same thing for like Cole or Miko Hardman, right? I feel like all of these guys are going to get their opportunities because there is no trust whatsoever with the running backs right now. I think it was it was the preseason game before the Packers. I'm not. They're, I'm having trouble remembering their opponent, the Chiefs, but they couldn't run the ball at all. They were passing like I think Patrick Mahomes had like 19 or 20 yeah. passing attempts in the first half of a preseason game. It is losing Reed. my mind. Like, yeah, <laughs> they're they're just passing the ball like all day, and I feel like that could be an, an issue that they run into frequently with just the lack of depth and stability that they have at the running back position. Dare I say they make even a last uh, ditch effort to grab another guy, you know, yeah. from whether it's like a Marlon Mack type or whatever, somebody that's available because they're not really getting anything from anybody. I know p- some people are high in Pacheco. I'm a Rojo guy. Uh, also been taking stabs at Jerick McKinnon, but when you got two cooks in the kitchen, you got none, right? So yeah. I feel like Juju and these like other that. receivers, especially Kelsey, will benefit from that theme. Yeah, I, I don't. Think, I don't want any KC running back. Honestly, I, I feel like by week four, pre we'll, Rojo. We'll, yeah, <laughs> I feel like we'll be back to a pretty easy, narrow target distribution with three guys by week four with this Kansas City mm-hmm. offense. That's my. That's my bold prediction. All right, who where are we uh, at? We're Bruni, middle of the oh. eighth. Joe what? Burrow, another steal for me in this one. Joe Burrow going in the eighth round in single QB is just it's that's criminal. He is my fourth highest uh, quarterback rated. He's going as number eight. I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like Joe Burrow could go out and have a season this year where we're talking like you know Peyton Manning, le- uh, Peyton Manning level numbers, where he has the potential to throw for five thousand yards. He has the potential to throw for forty five plus touchdowns. He has a great offense. He has a better offensive line. He has a great running back behind him, Joe and Joe connection. It's going to be hard to load the box up against these guys. And I know that they are coming off a great Super Bowl appearance, but I don't see this team as like a world beater still. Like their defense is not amazing to me outside of their their front rushing group. So I feel like they're going to be in a lot of competitive games. They're not just like a home run to go, you know, 11 and six this year. I feel like, you know, they're just as close to the top at number one in their division as they are as close to number three. I feel like it's going to be very competitive. So I see the Bengals and Joe Burrow 
uh, benefiting benefiting from a lot of positive games uh, game script offensively. Excuse me. I would say that will that's the one area I would expect it, want the redraft to be a little different, especially with the home leagues. Is the quarterbacks everywhere oh, yeah. like underdog anywhere that that is again any anywhere that's been doing it for a while? It feels like the runners are are clear to the top because okay, it makes sense. Even even with the super flex, right? If you can run, you're valuable. Whereas I think again, when you're, when you're drafting with your neighbor, you might not know that I fully expect. I mean, Joe, Joe Burrow is a good example. Cause I mean, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Matt Stafford, all of these guys exist. And Joe Burrow's ADP is eighth round, Sean. That's, yeah. I mean, again, if you don't like the runners, good year for you because you can, I just drafted in FFPC main event, Aaron Rodgers 13th round as a backup. Ooh. Yeah, and especially in some of these home leagues where you have six point Yikes. passing touchdowns, it's you it's do. really yeah. especially if you play at Yahoo, you probably do. It might so. be the default. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, for me, end of the eighth round, Damian Pierce. I mean, Ooh. we've been in early and often on him. Uh, Marlon Mack getting cut just kind of confirms it. I wouldn't even be surprised if you know he takes over the third down uh, work. Out of the backfield as well. We're like, so high on the Texans. It's great. Well, and, and again, like I, 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 I think. Love it. Did you watch like the the style he of play? Good. He he could be Najee Harris in that. Ooh. Um, Ooh. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Damian Pierce has 300 touches in this season. So for me, Ryan, oh, wow. I think for our high stakes ETH, ETH league, we take Christian McCaffrey, we take all the receivers we like, and we get Damian Pierce, and we're we're in a great all right, spot. But we'll have two picks back do, to back. Do you guys we, know who the last rookie running back that Lovey Smith coached? The last rookie when he oh, when the rookie came in. I, I know this, and it's we're gonna love the answer. It's Matt Forte. And that season, Matt Forte had nearly 400 touches. It was oh, ridiculous. It was like 300. I mean, just carries, watching the preseason, catches. all they're gonna do is pound the rock with Damian Pierce and then play action. You have Davis Mills, who Davis Mills can thrive running play action, and you get a bunch of dogs on the defense flying around, and then you're cashing us 30 to one to win the AFC South. Let's go Texans! Uh, my ninth round pick in the early end. The, I'm I'm normally not a New England running back guy at all, but Things are kind of shaken out that really have sold me on Ramondre Stevenson, um, just because they, it, you know, it, it just seems like it's setting up for him to have a big year. And they talk about now with the offense, they're not going to have a James White role. They're going to maybe just, you know, uh, switch series um, for Ramondre. So uh, yeah, I'm all in on Ramondre Stevenson. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm I picking like him I, over. I think he'll actually go earlier than the ninth round, though. I think that the hype is kind of building up right now, so getting him in the ninth would be a good deal for me. Yeah, I was just going off the ADP, and he was still uh, in the hundreds. I think again, so. I was. Uh, I have a. But draft. you're right. He he's been getting late heat. So I have a draft coming up, and it. You got. I mean, again, if you're drafting on ESPN or Yahoo, the ADP is out of control, wild <laughs> compared to underdog or sleeper, mm -hmm. and so. I 100% recommend you do that thing where you're like, hmm, who do I really like that they don't really like? Because there's some really, I mean, th these types of running backs are the kind that are like, hopefully you're drafting sooner than later. Because Damian Pierce, he's probably in the same bucket as Alan Lazard as like some smart guy is going to be like, yeah, Damian <laughs> Pierce championship. Uh, all right, middle round. Nah. I've got, uh, I've got Kareem Hunt oh, in the lovely. middle of the ninth. I think he's going to be a very good value this year, especially early on when you're looking at the first 11 games with, uh, is it Dobbs or uh, Jacoby Brissett? Not really sure how that's going to last out there. If Brissett will just be the guy for the whole 11 games or if he'll get pulled, lean into the run game. Give me some Nick Chubb. Give me some cream hunt. They feel like the safest floors on that, ro uh, on that roster right now. I don't trust any of the receivers. I have some shares of Ninjoku, but he's not starting week one for me yeah. in any fantasy leagues. He's going to yeah. be on the bench. It's not like he's a high profile tight end by any means. Kareem hunt and Nick Chubb. Those are guys. I feel like every one of us will be safe to start week one, moving forward with the Browns until we get more details and more information on how to react to quarterback play. Kareem, we're a Kareem hunt podcast. I mean, we're a Kareem hunt on the field podcast. Yes. To he, clarify. He, uh, <laughs> I mean, he just, he, when he's healthy, he produces points and he and, and scores there's still, touchdowns. There's still a chance he gets traded and finds a better <laughs> spot. Even um, mm. it seems like uh, they're going to keep him but I, 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 at this point. I'm almost happy. He's st still well, and, and to that yeah, point too, like they don't have no a benefit for the Browns to keep him right now with the way that uh, 
the passing game is looking like they, they yeah. need that extra bit of ammo. They need yeah. the triple they can't, option. You're right. They can't be <laughs> trading away uh, and targets like Kareem hunt. They don't, especially if you're, I mean, it, you know, especially Jacoby Brissett. I mean, a, an easy completion to Kareem Hunt. That's what the guy needs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kramer, what about you? End of the ninth. All right, let's swing it around. Fi- I assume we're finishing with 10 here. Yeah, we'll okay. do a 10. So, rounds. Uh, again, RB1 in New York for the Jets. J E T S. Michael Carter? What am I doing here? I'm fading the rookie. Brees Hall. Yeah. I gave you some an under on him uh, out in the betting Dear market. Dear Michael. Dear. <laughs> Mike, Michael Carter it, again in this, the, he's my third guy. I'm grabbing him. Cause I think he's going to have some value early in the season. It might go away. So I might, again, looking at the waiver wire to get him replaced at some point, but he was productive last year. He was very productive. And I, I too often, we just assume someone's going to walk into a bell cow role. And I, I just, nothing that's being reported out of New, New York suggests that this is anything more than 50, 50 Michael Carter is still a guy who's going to be part of the offense. So I'll start with that bullet and I'll swing around Kadarius, Tony. He's uh he's walking out there practicing. Uh, is, wait, is he, is he healthy, Ryan? Kadarius. He's, he's good Tony. for week one. He's good to go. Okay. Here we go. They need a receiver. They have I zero. can't wait to watch this goddamn giants <laughs> team. Kadarius Tony is going to be so electric. The one gift that Dave Gettleman left us with. Fabulous pick here, tenth round. <laughs> Amazing Fabulous. rapper, Young Joka. Ah, uh, we got to get some Young Joka and play it's it on not, the. Uh, it's not great. Play it on the. Uh, I, I'm not. It's not the kind of music that would get me hyped. <laughs> I'm a. I'm a boomer though. So what a, What about you, Bruni? Middle of the tenth. Where? What are you looking to hit? Uh, Jarvis Landry, a uh, very reliable receiver uh, down in New Orleans. Obviously, we've heard some more of the accelerated stuff on Michael Thomas, not sounding very good right now. No. So that opens a door for Alave and Landry. Uh, uh, Landry is going to be on the field more so just because of his experience, a much better blocker. I think he's going to be able to adapt to the play calling a lot more quickly. Um, so I feel like he's a guy that's just going to constantly be on the field for the Saints. Getting him in round 10 feels like a pretty good value to me. I think you still can get him later though. There are people that are yeah. lower on him. There's a lot of Alave love and that love is kind of pushing Jarvis down the board. I'm with it. I'm good. Well, it's cause the nerd, he doesn't have the a dot that the nerds like he, he's just one of those low. Alave like, has no a dot. He's, he's yeah, a rookie. Exactly. He's a exactly. No, but I mean, J- Landry's the kind of guy too. If you, he's against the stability, which in, in some, some might say is the point of the game, but Maybe he doesn't have the high ceiling, but again, when you're playing the redraft, you're not necessarily needing the ceiling because you're only playing against one person. Yeah, yeah, no, and uh, again, Landry reliable target, and I I could see James. This, this is the kind of guy we needed Bruni to come on and remind us of some of the reliable people that were. We we're, don't never not everything has to be a moonshot. Moonshot best ball guy, but best ball bros. It's over a good here. safe floor. Yeah, it's a good reality for you. You only, yeah, you're only beating eleven other guys, uh, some of which probably don't even know fantasy. Uh, one at a time. Last Jarvis will throw at least one touchdown this year. That's too. also <laughs> true. The guy's got an arm every year. It's going to be him and uh, Taysom Hill battling it out for non QB touchdowns. Uh, the, the throw will be to Taysom. Now there you go. He's yeah. t- again Taysom Hill first touchdown bet. Look out! I love it. Uh, last pick in the uh, in the in the tenth round. Give me George Pickens. I, I just, he's just, you know, at the That's end of the day. That's the best ball bro pick right there. Nice. No, but at the end of the day, I want to have fun watching fantasy football. And that guy just, that guy's a fun mm-hmm. receiver to watch. And I would compare him, you know, Tomlin isn't scared to play rookies who can produce. Juju Smith Schuster, his first year as a rookie, Dog. 58 catches, seven touchdowns. Now he had Antonio Brown aside from him, <laughs> but they have Deontay Johnson, yeah. they have Chase Claypool, they have. Pat Fryermuth. I think it's going to create a lot of good opportunities for George Pickens. By all accounts, he's going to he's going to be out there for the majority of the snaps. Yeah, by all accounts, he's running in the two wide receiver sets. So yeah, I think he may even yeah. To your point, he may even be beating out Claypool's in the slot. Yeah, so uh, I think he may even yeah. If he's out there for two wide receiver sets, that means he's not going to be coming off the field that much. I yeah. I like the upside on George Pickens in the tenth round. I mean. He's he's definitely on my list. This for sure. is just a troll job for the former bear, Mitchell Trubisky. Right? <laughs> no, if you're Mitchell Trubisky, I mean, again, he makes Mitchell Trubisky look great. I mean, he's just snagging all different kinds of balls. So uh, oh, he's a, good that, there, and that's a drop. <laughs> snagging all different kinds of anyone, balls. anyone, Bruni. Before we go, anyone else 
I, I know you had JD McKissick farther down your list. Oh, love him. I love that, especially unfortunately cool. with the Brian Robinson stuff. But they brought in JD McKissick. They went out of their way to re-sign him and pay him because mm-hmm. they know he can catch balls. But your thoughts on JD McKissick and anyone else you want to tag before we close things out? Oh uh, yeah, McKissick just going to have another guy, just very safe floor, very reliable. They uh, had the option to let him walk and save a fair amount of money, right? So him coming back, um, paying him on the uh, the RFA offer from the Bills, it just signifies like, hey, he's going to have a role. Like e- even when Robinson was healthy, I was still grabbing McKissick at this ADP or maybe even a little bit deeper, uh, just because I felt like when they're in those long situations, when when Wentz puts them in trouble. McKissick's mm-hmm. probably going to clean up a little bit of those garbage time touches, you know, um, whereas Brian Robinson and uh, Antonio Gibson would still kind of get more early down work. So I like McKissick's role there to just kind of just be a, a favorable target to Wentz. Um, the only other guys that were listed, <sighs> Sean, I really want to hear your, your take on Justin Fields. Cause oh, I, I love it him. before I, I watched the, the SGPN TV. Yes. You guys are talking go. top, top fantasy quarterbacks and man, your, your <laughs> field talk had me going. He, he's, he's going, he's, he's a guy who, again, Trey Lance never played in big spots. Just, you know, Justin Fields has, he has the ability to run. So you have a struggling offensive line. How do you help them out with a scrambling mobile quarterback? Like Justin Fields, the commit connection is legit. Like he's checking so many of the boxes. He's a guy who flashed enough year one with a couple like special plays. Go back and watch what he did in that Monday night game. Now that was a crazy game, but still he had some professional high level throws. Uh, you throw against the Steelers. Yeah. Against the Steelers uh, that Steelers. that Monday night game, the, yep. he, he just has a shit ton of potential. And I think the rushing floor keeps him super interesting for fantasy. I mean, you might not even need him in a, in a 12 team league, but if he's, if you just ghost quarterback and you want to take a shot at Justin Fields, you could do much worse in my mind. I think the Russians going to be there. And again, you not no Matt Nagy offense and the Cole Komet connection with, with Darnell Mooney, who, like I mentioned, the a dot, like the guy is a, is a legit receiver. He's getting no love. Uh, just adding no, to I, the, I absolutely love it. Yeah. <laughs> just adding to the JD McKissick uh, party. I think he's also a tremendous guy to grab in a zero RB build because you can start him week one and you know you're going to get something from him. Uh, both him and Naheem Hines are going like late enough to where you can you could probably grab both in the nine ten. Both are fun, yeah. Nine ten, ten eleven, mm-hmm. and again you're you're grabbing a guy that has a pretty established workload. Who again? They're disrespected because they're never going to be a bell cow guy. But how many times? I mean, Naheem Hines has definitely won me some money in DFS. Pretty sure McKissick's won you some money in DFS. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's roll. All right, Bruni. Appreciate you calling in. Uh, make sure you check him out on the SGPN Fantasy Football Podcast. You can download that uh, wherever you get awesome podcasts, and then follow him out. Uh, follow, check him out on Twitter at t i t t h j b. That is short for his other show to the hizzy or sorry. Take it to the hizzy uh, Justin Bruni, uh, Bruni appreciate your time, man. And again, check out all the uh, articles, Please. podcast draft kit. We got a ton of stuff completely free. Hop Fantasy in our discord. Feed. The the YouTube chat was fired up. Take it, take it to the discord, baby. <laughs> Love a good debate. Talking fantasy football, Sean. S- yes, we need uh, I'm seeing that we need some SG P- PN, uh, headband. Sauce oh gone. yeah, we that's already in the works. I, okay. I would appreciate that. My hair that goes is, very fast. Stay tuned. <laughs> you, the SGPN I, headband is coming. I, I hate. I mean, I you know I like to compliment uh, other men all the time, but <laughs> I've never seen a man wear a headband so smooth. <laughs> I, 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 oh you, man, thanks for a white guy. Come on, I mean this is no, backup too. This is oh my, backup. my goodness. I, maybe it's just the hair. I was all worried. Yeah, maybe it's just the hair. You're you're well, just entranced by show. the amazing. No. <laughs> We are not pro hair here. Sorry, Justin. I mean, I, me voluntarily. Just I'll go get whatever. a haircut here soon. There you go. Company policy. <laughs> How dare you come on this fucking show this with the hair. Yankees? <laughs> yeah, cut that hair. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean. Second, the Money Green. He's Ryan. I'm ready for my draft, Sean. Kramer, let it ride. Thanks a lot, Bruni. Take it easy, man. Be good.